Our, our third speaker in our little mini, mini session is uh, Ron Harvey, he's a conservator, uh, runs Tuckerbrook Conservation, a conservation company out of uh, Lincolnville, Maine. Um, we've worked together on a number of different projects over the years, everything from dreadful caulk removal projects in Petersburg, Virginia, to wonderful projects like the one that Ron's going to tell you about today. So uh, let's uh, hit it. And then um, do you want to just do, do the first one? I sure. Thanks. PC illiterate. Thank you. Can we have the lights down, please? So Dennis had called me and asked uh, four conservators to come in and do a Kabbalah looking at the Vala Simpson pieces early on. And whether I won or lost, I was the only one that showed up. So this has become one of my most endearing and, and challenging projects in my 32-year career. Um, <clears throat> what, what the challenge is is twofold. One is that we're looking at moving objects that normally would not be moved. Um, many of you that have spoken today are talking about um, artifacts and, and buildings and structures and art objects that are not movable and are in their original place. Well, we have the opportunity with this project to take them down and to move them. And in the process of moving them, we can move them literally and figuratively into the um, a conservation facility, but also be able to move them to a point where they'll be able to remain mechanically functional and aesthetically appropriate. And the aesthetically appropriate is the, the harder of the two issues, in my opinion. So I was brought on site, and we ended up doing, uh, going up into a cherry picker and running around looking at these objects and doing a quick site survey and going, OK, these are incredibly complex, large, functional objects with many, many levers, layers of attachment, including paint and pigment. And you see at a distance, they become these linear drawings in air that are then activated by the wind. Um, another view from the park that you, know, you won't get to see in another year. They're, as I said, they're coming down and they'll move into uh, downtown Wilson. So the closer I got, the scarier it became. You see sections of lost paint and rust, which we expect, because there was very little maintenance other than lubrication of, of, of functioning uh, movable parts. Um, these attachments, uh, Vala certainly was a scavenger and used and picked materials and blended them in ways that are both unique and, in terms of conservation, uh, challenging. Uh, I want you to try to remember this horizontal element of V. Simpson and how it's rusted. Dennis showed you an earlier photograph that showed it with some level of pigment. And, and Jeff had asked Vallis, because I said, Jeff, was this ever painted? So he asked Vallis, and Vallis said, I never painted it, but it had been painted. Um, so again, as Jeff was saying, you know, A, being a, a Yankee coming down um, and then trying to immediately make some contact with Wallace to ask questions uh, in a couched but appropriate way to, to understand what he wants in terms of the appearance of these. He would, as Jeff said, would be very vague or would say, well, when we talked about moving, he said, if you choose one to move, it'll be wrong. And if I choose one to, to move, it'll be wrong. So there you have it. Um, again, we had this amazing facility, uh, and it really is a conservation dream to have, have as much space as we need um, close to the, the area where they'll be relocated on, in Barn Street. Um, again, it started out as an em empty spaces. Um, there was a lot of publicity, and this is a, a local paper, and I want to I use this always as a touchstone because we talk about conservation. Now, there's an element of restoration. And then this new concept for this, this uh, group who's involved with um, the Whirly Gig Project in Wilson, the Downtown Development Group, this idea of conservation is kind of a new theme. So again, it's, it's educating on both sides of the, of the road and trying to cut um, a swath. And everyone's saying, but we need to do this quickly. We need to employ people. We need to move ahead. What, what can you do? How can you make these work? So by moving these down into, into the uh, Barn Street facility, um, photograph on your right shows the, the pieces um, sort of sitting on um, odd extraneous material, not safe. And, and Danny Price, who's the lead guy in terms of the, the mechanical repairs, uh, really is a great guy, 
uh, 30 years working for Bridgestone, and he developed mounting systems on wheels. So not only are they safe, so the, the theme of health and human safety runs throughout this, this concept of both conservation and preservation, us, the objects, and the public, because this is going to go into a public space. It's, going, it's transcending from being artist-owned to public-owned. Um, so Danny ended up creating these so we, pieces could be moved around and worked on and not be damaged as, as they're going through process. Um, again, just an overview, and I want you to take a note of the, the, the guy on the bicycle and uh, uh, the, the rust guy, basically. Uh, and again, here's that, that uh, large horizontal section of V. Simpson in the, uh, the conservation lab. And so my question was, how do you want it to look? As a conservator, I'm trained to deal with um, providing information and, and ideally treatments which are long-term, stable, um, retreatable, and fall within uh, certainly the code of ethics, but also in this project, give us at least a 20 to 25 year lifespan before they have to be um, replaced. So the question was, what, what time period do you want to interpret these, and what should the surface look like? And in the back of my brain, I'm saying to myself, I'll ask these questions, but I'm not going to answer them because these are curatorial questions. So I pleaded um, in many different routes to have um, more of a um, curatorial input. If I'm going to go before the firing squad, I want company. No one's laughing. Uh, so again, this fragility, these are, these are bicycle tires that are probably 30 to 50% rust. And then there's always the PR, whenever we would come on site and realize on this project, I would come on site for two days, twice a year. Um, and in those two days, Dennis and I are trying to get th a week's worth of work done. Plus we would have PR things that we had to stop for, like these photographs. Um, we'd be interviewed. There was a videographer that was going through this whole process. So, um, and then there were events in the evening. So it, would, it didn't give us a lot of time to scheme. And some of the some of the folks working on this project. So again, with and before curatorial curatorial presence, we had um, Brendan, who's with uh, the State Arts Council, and he was certainly willing to at least take temporary control of of curation, but knew also his limits. And so um, whether we de developed that as a, a strategy to sort of slow things down. Um, but, um, and so we picked pieces which were more straightforward, complex, yes, but more straightforward, in terms of these, these boxed units that are wood with attachments, uh, reflector attachments, and then um, many uh, components of stainless steel. My concern about the mounting system was not only the aesthetics of what they should look like, but also the health and human safety aspects. And again, early on wanted someone who was a certified welder to review all the welds because, again, these are going into a public space and they become the liability for the city of Wilson. And then we have painted surfaces and everything from um, intact to non-existent. Um, and the most challenging are these areas where you've got rust going underneath painted surfaces, original painted surfaces. You've got areas where um, volus would paint with no primer um, on either metal or aluminum and literally the paint just flakes. And then we've got the areas where uh, it's, as Dennis coined the phrase, the hand of volus, where we're actually seeing um, elements that he attached or uh, went into with a brush or with a stick and paint and, and complemented or, or did filled in areas. There's, there's pencil marks and then th there's the remains of the paint um, and have a nice day. And on these um, attachments and elements that, that were movable, like these hands and arms, uh, the reflector surfaces, but then going in and, and really adding more. Um, these are very, very fragile surfaces. And so as a conservative, you know, banging my head against the wall saying, why? Why me? Um, and again, the variations. How do you want the paint to look? What paint do you want? What level uh, of interpretation? 
Um, we have the advantage of, um, through Jeff, of having Vols be able to provide materials, and these are, these are uh, rollers, these little guys on the front. They're part of a, um, a textile uh, manufacturing equipment, and Vols would stockpile, and you can see piles of them in his shop. And so I was saying to Jeff, get as many as you can. Start stockpiling materials because we need to think in terms of long-term preservation and repair of these pieces. Uh, again, what they were doing was replacing um, bearings, um, failed materials, missing, missing or worn shafts, uh, and using metal that was about the, the same dimension, and using uh, bearings that were sealed so there was um, uh, reduce the amount of lubrication needs, and then where they needed to do lubrication, they would include little um, stop, gap, stop cups, caps, so they could go in and then lubricate. And then the mechanical folks are going to come up with a system in terms of maintenance on the mechanical side for each of the, the whirly gigs. So there's going to be a map and basically a large um, uh, preservation and maintenance manual. Uh, doing some simple test on cleaning surfaces so that, you know, when I'm not there, work still has to continue, and I'm not there very often, four, four, four days out of the year last year. So uh, looking at cleaning systems that were both um, non-threatening either to the object or to the, to the staff. Um, I did some coating treatments, um, thinking, all right, if you want these to look the way they are, uh, let me look, start looking at systems that at least would maybe give us five-year life expectancy. Uh, did some testing in terms of clear coats. If you wanted rust areas, there's clear coat systems that we could put over that would give us probably 10 to 15 years life expectancy, yet we could map them out so that, again, it would appear like a rusted surface. But without that curatorial input, I'm not making the call. Did, we did our, our, you know, our six-month field test, which we all know is, is nothing, but at least it slowed down the process. Um, and again, um, keeping Valus informed and asking him, um, engaging him, and also um, respecting his wishes. So what am I going to do in terms of conservation? Ta-da, my, 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 my request, my, my, my need for uh, curatorial, curatorial input was solved when, when Brooks was brought onto the project. Um, bless her soul. Uh, and so here's a person who had been um, curator at uh, Folk Art Museum in New York, now is at LACMA, has a, a strong and well-grounded understanding of outsider art. And so we spent the day looking at the objects, both here and also at Vallis's, and looking at the complexity. And you know, we see areas where when you remove the reflectors, you see original paint. So at least that helps us in terms of what it originally looked like. Brooke, should we repaint these? Uh, and then we have these other areas, which are hand of olives, where there's these really minute, fragile details that have been applied. And i um, scratching my head and say, well, I could do something that would probably give us a three-year maintenance cycle. And that's just not functional when you think of going 40 feet in the air in a cherry picker, and you now have 30 of these. Um, so the bicycle was really the sort of the turning point. And, uh, we, we discussed the possibility, what could, what could be done, and I'm telling Brooke about the work I've been doing, the testing, and she said, what about replication? What about replicating those most fragile pieces, moving those inside to the museum which we're creating, and putting replicas on those, of those most fragile elements on the whirly gigs, so they still have the function, that is, they, they move, they turn, they engage, they have the, the aesthetic surface, um, but we're not putting these most fragile components um, in danger. And that's, so that's one of the possible scenarios in terms of the final, final treatment for these. Um, and you can see by f fragility, um, you get up close and you see many of these pieces are they're pooched. I mean, they're really falling apart. And we're talking about having to almost remake them in order to just stabilize them. So if they were replicated on these most fragile, most damaged surfaces, 
structures. Um, we could then keep these, use these for interpretation in the museum, conserve them in the museum to a museum standard, have them live in the museum, and give the people who are visiting the opportunity to see these up close and personal, but then still go into the park and see the functional objects. So here's a, a this, again, this is that vertical element from V. Simpson where, uh, yes, we saw that it had been painted, Wallace never painted it. What did it look like? And underneath, in a small area, we found some original paint, which has been sampled and gone out for paint analysis. So this, in fact, and again, um, with curatorial input, the idea was to move these to um, as functional and as complete as possible. So often, um, we have to dance with the devil. And DuPont, early on, had made a, an overture of, of donating $10,000 in product. And I know DuPont's products, um, and I know DuPont industry. Uh, I wanted to look at, A, uh, what we're going to do in terms of what these surfaces should look like. Um, and this was before uh, Brooke came on board. And B, um, I want something that we can, we know is long-term stable, that those paints that are intact and not lifting, if we can put an isolating layer and then put a, um, a, a, an industrial coating over top of it, so we can, and we would sample ahead of time. We would keep, you know, copious notes, uh, documentation, uh, and so the ability then, when products change, if Dupont, if we could engage Dupont in this as as taking it on more seriously, we'd have that exchange so that if there's a failing product or if there's a product that goes out of production, they could tell us what would be compatible and, and functional. And so I'm just in the process, um, when we went down this last time um, to Wilson, DuPont had opted to $50,000 in product. And I said, well, that's great. Uh, the local DuPont uh, industrial uh, supplier came in. We talked. And he was saying, oh, well, you know, we could just do this. And I walked him. We walked him through the project. And I explained to him what the conservation concerns are, and he went, I see why you want somebody in the home office. I see why you want somebody in the, the technical side. And so I'm making those connections so that we can have this long-term marriage with DuPont. Um, and I know if they commit to the product, uh, the project, that their products will be the best. They'll, they'll engage. And they're excited about this. And they can even come down and train people as to application. And again, I'm, I'm reminding them that in terms of surface, we don't want spray coat. Uh, we don't want things that look like automobiles. It's going to be hand applied, because that's how Wallace did a lot of the work on these, on these older pieces. The, newer, the, the new pieces, the replicated pieces, if that's the side we go in, would go out. The, the failing pieces would be treated as um, museum objects, as part of exhibition. Um, and I think it's a great learning tool for the public. So the idea, uh, in terms of my overview of conservation, is maintenance, longevity, health and human safety, respecting the, the spirit and the, the aesthetic essence and the mechanical elements of uh, the whirly gigs, but also um, the spirit and the soul of Wallace. And we're fortunate we still have them, um, but at some point we won't. Thank you. And the list of thank yous. Did you want to? Did you want to thank or do? Uh, yeah. We have time for just a, a question or two, if anyone has it. We have a little piece of Wallace with us today. Do you, want, do you want to talk about? We have just just a second, Jeff. Yeah, just a second. Listen, um, Is that yours? Yeah. Okay. Um, road signs he got from one prison in North Carolina about 40 years ago. Um, HVAC stands. These are the cotton mill rollers. They're from uh, a string mill bearings. Um, Electroplated nickel silver. He has hundreds of these. He's got like a. Um, a, uh, con a shipping container by half full of um, small electric motors, industrial light covers, and this is one I got from him I bought that I love. So. 
yeah. great paint I love on this one. So I love how he did the eyes. But yeah, he he is he's hooked the motors up to some, and then he's got one with the generator that powers some lights. So, which we didn't realize because we didn't see it, and people had shot the lights out over the years. So. <laughs> And do we have any questions? We can have time for one or two. Yes, Nancy. Uh, um, sir, my question is, did you say you're only there two days a year? I'm there every day. Oh, but. Ron. Yeah, Ron and I have been. And then who walked the streets and I? We communicate some and then uh, <laughs> The last time I was down, I said, OK, you've been taking me to dinner for how many days over the last year and a half? Yeah, yeah, you've, you've been taking me to dinner over the last hour, several hours, and I said, you need to either propose to me um, and make this a, a long-term relationship or, or stop dating. And we need, we need more, and what the next move is to go after a grant that's specifically for conservation so that we have funding and we don't feel like we're pulling money out of people's pockets um, because, again, remember part of this, the thrust of this project was about employment. And um, uh, at this point, actually, I'm working at half my daily rate for them. And I told them I, I'm really, I, I, I love and I'm challenged by this project, and I want to see it through. And they're on board. Um, so yes, more time. There, yeah, we, we have to, like, there's mechanical work that has to take place. We change out bearings and fix the mechanicals on them. Plus, some of these pieces are covered with like 2,000 reflectors that are cut up road signs. We have to take that off before you can do any surface treatments anyway on the pieces that we're going to do um, the whole system of. So we have to get reflectors off, which takes time, all of the hardware. Yeah, the day-to-day -day of all of that, of all of that, yeah. It, and we collect, we keep a, the collection and catalog everything that comes off. Um, we put reflectors on cardboard, label where they come from, how we got them off, we put them in an, a section we call a tobacco barn because we hang them all and, uh, and keep that. We take pictures. I've got thousands. I, we took five down the other day and I got about 1,500. So, yeah. and, we, and we also have two consultant conservators, um, Andrew Lenz at the Philadelphia Art Museum, who is probably the best in the United States in terms of coatings and corrosion, and uh, Malcolm Cullum, who is head of objects uh, at uh, Air and Space Museum at Smithsonian. So I, I like, um, and the reason I was really wanted to get um, a Malcolm on board is, I think of these uh, whirly gigs as automobiles on sticks. And for the public, that's an easy way to explain it because you're talking about surface coatings and you're talking about mechanics. Um, and then you're talking about up off the air, uh, off the ground in the air. So um, Malcolm comes out of um, functional objects and understands this this dicey walk between uh, uh, museum conservation and and functional objects conservation. So last question. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that you have all these people from the outside area between the source of the project and the outside and the local people that work on the project. The only the only outside people um, are Dennis and I. Yeah, we, we, we've got other local people. Um, yeah, Brendan Greaves is at North, uh, State Arts Council, and he, he has a background in art, um, and, uh, and he uh, is also a folklorist as well, and then Juan Logan is at UNC Chapel Hill, and he's an artist, and has worked in metal as well over the years, and if you want to talk to that anymore, um, what now? Well, those everybody in the shop. Uh, well, everybody in the shop who is doing mechanical work, um, we have a workforce of about 15 folks that some are volunteers, some are paid full-time, some are paid part-time. We have retirees. We have people who have been out of work for a long time. Um, uh, we, we're just at the point now where we're going to um, get people e education through the community college system, so they're getting on-the-job training as well as going to do some classroom work. Um, we also have some folks who have, you know, 35 years of experience who are just doing this part time and they're helping to educate folks in Wilson. Um, so it, it's kind of a diverse project. We've got a lot of pieces and parts and uh, it's, it's running five days a week, um, eight hours a day. So actually.
10 hours a day. <laughs> And I, I didn't actually say who, uh, sort of why I was involved. Um, I'm, I'm actually with the National Park Service in the Philadelphia office. I run a monument care program. And so my entire participation has been footed by my, my office. So this is the, the National Park Service supporting the effort. Um, so, uh, but I think, you know, by an, almost entirely, it's really a local effort. And uh, a lot of people working on the projects, they're very much guys like Volus. I mean, they, in some cases, the guys in the shop, they, they think like Volus. They, they see mechanical things like Volus does. So uh, that's, I think, one of the real strengths of the project as well, is to be able to tap into um, to people who see things in a very intuitive, see engineering in a very intuitive way. So. All right, thank you. And they'll be around um, the rest of the conference for more questions.